All right, guys, we made it out to the woods. Gonna do the review of my 22 Pan America. She's got about 16,000 miles on her. We're gonna go over the love and hates, all the accessories I've added to it, and a little bit about reliability and all the other stuff about Harley Davidson. It's gonna be brutally honest and uh, start with, it's the best bike I've ever owned. And also for one reason, it's the worst bike I've ever owned, but I still love it anyways. The best part about it is all the electronic suspension, the throttle modes, everything else is great for touring. Done two iron butts on this bike in five months. Did one on New Year's Day, which you saw the video if you follow, like, and subscribe. We did one for Memorial Day for the Wounded Warrior Project. The bike is just, was perfect. I, uh, 1,000 miles is easy on it. Super comfortable on the road. We went up to Dirt Days. It's super good off-road. Um, it's just the most comfortable bike I've really ever owned. I like the upright riding position. Now that I got it all sorted out, I got a Wonderlich seat, got the risers, which you saw in the 7,000 mile review video. But uh, after about a year of ownership, my biggest complaint is the reliability. And the list of things that I've had gone wrong is when it was new, about 3,000 miles, it kept stalling on me and the wires were routed wrong to the rear fuel injector. So it stalled a couple times and did some weird stuff. Um, the dealership, Old School Harley Davidson, has been phenomenal with the RevMax platform, the Pan Americas, the Sportsters. They're really uh, digging into the RevMax hard. If you've been on the forums, the Pan America forums, you can see all the problems people are having. And like, this is a new product for Harley Davidson. They hit the design and engineering out of the park for never making this kind of metric style adventure bike, you know the upright touring, sport touring, adventure part. Um, but they got some kinks they got to work out, and they are working on them. I've gone through a fuel pump at 10,000 miles. Uh, about 2,000 miles ago, my right hand control went, and it freaked out all the suspension and was locking that out. Dealership took care of that. They had it fixed in like two, three days with a new hand control. The fuel pump was down for like a week and a half because they had to order it and diag it. It didn't actually fail, it was just screaming really loud, so it hasn't left me stranded yet. Knock on alu aluminum. Um, the dash right here, you see the dash is kind of flopping around in it. That's something that parts are on order right now, the dealer's taking care of it. They haven't really seen one, but the dash and the screen's kind of floppy and that's kind of annoying when you're going down the road hitting bumps in the screen. You can, you hit a good bump and you hear, you know, the thing rattling around. Other than that, I haven't had, the motor's been great, suspension's been great, um, brakes are good, everything else has been really good. I put a new chain on it at about 12K, because the stock chain was kind of, I think they hardly cheaped out a little bit on the chain. It was a DID chain, but I think it was a low-end model, so it's got a brand new RK gold X-ring chain on it, still the stock sprockets. It has the uh, Dunlop trail mission max tires which in my 7,000 mile review video i talked about all the things i was going to add to the bike and the first thing it needed was tires for gravel these tires have about 8,000 miles on it and he just showed you the tread or 8,500 miles on them and they're probably like a 60 40 tire they're wearing really well I, they, they probably have another 5,000 miles in them easy i mean it's starting to lack a little bit off road but they've been great Front still looks brand new. I did add a super trap pipe because I needed to hear this bike. I wasn't going to do an exhaust on it, but I really like the sound of this and it was really affordable. Unfortunately, they discontinued it, but it has the discs on the back, like the classic super trap. And I've taken the core out. I can make it really loud. I can put discs back in it, take discs, discs out of it to quiet it down. Like we went to dirt days, I put the core back in and it was nice and quiet. I got unit garage racks on it, which came off Matt's Pan America that you've seen the video of that. We did an iron butt with that video. He got rid of his bike. Click the link above and you can see what he bought or you already watched that video. So these are off of his. I got the Tortec box on the back and rack that we, that we uh, scored a deal on on Black Friday last year. Super happy with this. This is one of my favorite storage things. This usually never comes off the bike. I have soft luggage, the giant loop, 
um, is it Moto Trek or is that a different brand? I think they're the Moto Trek soft panniers. Took those up to dirt days. They're perfect. They strap on real nice, fit everything good. I had to add a heat shield so I don't melt the bags. But uh, Wonderlich seat. We added um, Toratec hand guards. These things are super beefy. I was going to go with the Bark Busters, but I was at Toratec one day and they had these in black and these are super nice in case I ever drop it or when I drop it. I haven't, haven't dropped it yet. I shouldn't be saying this. Now it's going to happen probably when we leave here. <laughs> but um, still got the Denali Can Smart controller in the bike. Um, one thing we did do is we became brand ambassadors for Denali Electronics and they gave us a screaming deal on these D4 pod lights with the hybrid lenses. They came with all the lenses. We got spot lenses. We're going to do a video on that coming up eventually and just compare spot lenses, hybrid lenses, some Baja lights, some uh, more Denali lights, and that's more videos to come. But super happy with those. Those are a big upgrade from the Bajas I had. Um, technical difficulties with the camera, but we'll keep going here. A um, couple things I've added since the 7,000 mile review video is I did add the uh, Harley Davidson um, headlight guard, which uh, I did make a video on that, but this was $120 and it is a piece of cheap aluminum and they sell the exact same one on Amazon for 20 bucks. So if you own a Pan America, check uh, AliExpress or Amazon, you can save some money on little stuff like this. I mean, it's just a piece of aluminum. And this is the Harley one and it rattles. But um, a couple other things for protection I added. I do have the Harley Davidson uh, radiator guard, which was on there when I got the bike because I knew I'd put a rock right through that radiator, be stranded and have probably a thousand dollar fix to take the whole bike apart and buy a radiator. I'm sure that stuff's not cheap. It says HD. Um, we did add, I did add the uh, camel gut guard when I did the headlight guard and this thing has been awesome. I completely wrecked the uh, stock skid plate. It was just a piece of tin foil folded up into two pieces and it was just slapped on the bottom of the bike. It was trash. This gut guard is actually one of the highest quality parts I think I've put on the bike for impressed on the quality. The welds on it, the fitment, it has a plate underneath it like a uh, mini, uh, what do you call it, a subframe kind of plate can't see it but it bolts to the motor and then the skid plate bolts to that so if you whack this hard that mid plate will bend and take any of the forces so you don't shear a bolt off in the bottom of your motor case and cost you 10 grand because you broke the case of the motor so that was a really good idea for camel it wasn't a ton of money it was like 350 bucks there's some out there for 600 but this is the only one of the only ones besides Toratec that has that mid plate to absorb all the impacts so you don't shear the bolts off the motor. Um, Got to keep it protected, you know? Moving back here, we went up to Americade. Wonderlich was up there with Jekyll and Hyde because they're both the same company. Wonderlich is a German company. They make all kinds of parts for this bike, but their mainstream thing is BMWs. And this seat is very firm but it's really good on a long trip. You don't want a seat that's soft that you sink through and you start feeling the seat pan after an hour. And this one, you definitely don't. It has a real, little relief here for the gentleman, which is one of my favorite parts. It tips the seat, it tips you back a little bit. You're no longer shooting into the tank. It has a nice grippy material. This is actually a um, thermo something material that uh, reflects sun and heat has been a game changer for the bike. It took some time to get used to the firmness, but the longer you ride on it, the more comfortable it gets and your, your butt kind of forms to it and gets used to it. The relief cut's really nice. It was $600 to add the matching passenger seat and that front one was 600. I just never really have a passenger and I don't sit back there, so I didn't see the need to uh, put it on there and make it, make it all flow together. But other than that, I just wish it was a little bit more reliable. There's a little bit in the back of my head that doesn't want to take it too far, even though that's what I bought it for. I wanted to go up in the middle of Canada, out in the middle of nowhere, 400 miles remote, no cell service, no anything, but I'm still on the edge of if I get up there and it has a problem, I'm gonna be stuck in another country or 
on the side of the road in the woods and no way to get it out of the woods if it pukes a motor or anything like that with the other problems I've had, a fuel pump dies or a hand control again. But um, other than that, I'm super happy with the bike and I think I'm gonna have to end up buying a full extended warranty for it so I can trust it as much because if it breaks out of warranty, I won't be able to afford it. Um, I think other than that, I love my Pan America and looking back now, I probably wouldn't have bought it, but I own it now and I've fallen in love with it. So just gonna have to see how many miles she'll take and keep running her. Gonna go through it soon. Wheel bearings, all that kind of stuff and just keep it fresh. Try to keep it going 100% as long as I can and keep putting this bike to the test. We're going camping in a couple weeks Definitely gonna do some more off-road. Maybe get some knobbier tires for the next set because my skills are getting better off-road with the bike and uh, definitely looking forward to more dirt riding. But, um, so that's about it for my review on the Pan America. I probably missed a couple things, but uh, if you have any questions or anything or situations you've had with your Pan America or things you wanna know about it, you're thinking about getting it, I wouldn't push you away from it 100%, but definitely check other bikes and other brands and manufacturers, Triumph, KTM, you know, BMW. But definitely get to your dealer and try one of these. Harley's been really good standing behind them. And all I can do is hope for the best with it. But uh, drop a comment down below, ask questions, hit that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you somewhere else out on the dirt in the woods. Ride safe.